friends this is captain s s choudhury welcome to my second video on submarine uh, in the last video we talked about the stability aspect of the submarine and uh, this time we will talk about certain other aspects when the submarine is on surface she has some extra buoyancy compared to what is required for floating what is required to balance her weight same like surface ships and that extra buoyancy is called reserve buoyancy but when the submarine must dive down when the submarine must uh, sink in the water what is required is the weight is slightly more than the buoyancy it provides so that is done by filling up these uh, ballast tanks but when the submarine reaches the required depth you know in order that the submarine remains uh, stationary there you know uh, it is required that the buoyancy perfectly balances the weight so uh, this is done by pumping out some ballast and pumping out the ballast at the depth would be done by sending pressurized air to dispel the water from the ballast tanks another thing which uh, is very uh, peculiar about the submarines different than the surface ships is when the submarine is at surface you know can you imagine uh, submarines water plane area it's reasonably good but when some longitudinal shift of center of gravity takes place what can happen is a gz1 in the longitudinal direction will be created but we know that mctc is w into gml upon 100 l that is displacement multiplied by the vertical distance from center of gravity to longitudinal beta center divided by 100 l now what happens when a, a longitudinal moment is created when the longitudinal moment is created she will change the trim but remember submarine's shape is such i mean it is long and initially it has got long water plane area but if the submarine tilts you know the water plane area can considerably decrease and when the water plane area considerably decreases as we know longitudinal meta center position suppose we talk about a submarine you know having a longitudinal meta center initially at this height this longitudinal meta center will come down because the distance from bm distance from b to ml is moment of inertia of the water plane area about the athwart ship axis right moment of inertia of water plane area about the athwart ship axis divided by underwater volume so uh, now what happens is uh, we are talking about the submarine at surface what happens is when the submarine trims the water plane area might reduce considerably and when the water plane area reduces considerably the position of ml will come down gml will reduce also and when gml reduces the mctc which is proportional to gml will also reduce and when mctc reduces a small shift of weight will cause considerable trimming of the submarine which means that the submarine is very weight sensitive there are a few other interesting things about the submarine for example unlike the ship the submarine can execute motions freely in six dimensions in case of submarine we have ceiling we have floor this is something like aircraft like they also have uh, different levels of height like called ceiling and floor this is not there in case of surface ship obviously but there is one difference which is uh, uh, um, which makes the submarine absolutely unique even uh, as you compare it with the aircraft because for the submarine to remain buoyant the forward motion is not necessary like aircraft a ready reference diagram can be used sometimes on the computer called moment diagram a moment diagram used on submarine provides ease in finding the change in weight that must be made in variable ballast to compensate for a change in the variable load if a weight w is added at some point p along the ship's length for example in the given illustration we can see that if 1000 kg is added at a point p there will be no change in the weight or in the longitudinal position of the center of gravity if 290 kg of water are blown from the forward trim tank and 710 kg are blown out from the after trim tank like we saw the moment diagram there is another diagram called equilibrium polygon 
The equilibrium polygon of a typical diesel powered submarine is a device for presenting graphically the envelope of variation in weight and longitudinal moment which can be obtained by adjusting the variable ballast. In the figure the weight of variable ballast is plotted vertically and longitudinal moment about the transverse reference plane for the equilibrium conditions is plotted horizontally. Each side of the polygon represents the effect of filling one of the variable ballast tanks. The polygon is constructed by adding algebraically and successively the weights and moments of each of the variable ballast tank starting with the forwardmost tank and proceeding aft then repeating the process starting with the aftermost and proceeding forward. Each summation is plotted as where the OA represents the weight and the moment developed as the forward trim tank is filled. Line AB the effect of filling the forward variable fuel oil tank after the forward trim tank has been filled and so forth until point E representing the weight and moment of all the variable ballast tank is reached. The same point E is also reached by a different route by plotting the various stages of the summation starting with the aftermost tank and proceeding forward. The exterior broken line shows the effect of considering the negative tank as part of the variable ballast tank. Point P can be reached by filling the after trim tank moving from O to L, part of the after variable fuel tank moving L to S, then partially filling the auxiliaries forward variable fuel tank and the forward trim tank. Line SR is parallel to and not longer than HG. PQ is parallel to and not longer than GF and QP is parallel to and not longer than FE. This is only one of the many ways in which the point P can be reached. So how is the navigation done on submarine? Like when the submarine is on the surface, the navigation is same like any service craft. But when the submarine goes down, this cannot be performed. I mean, the things are different. So what happens? So you have inertial navigation system. What is this inertial navigation system? Inertial navigation system is based on the first two laws of motion. Right? And we know the first two laws of motion. It talks about force is equal to mass into acceleration and it talks about inertia. So uh, uh, submarines uh, are given the initial position and thereafter you have this inertial navigation system which has got accelerometers, gyros, gyros is to keep the platform horizontal, accelerometer is to give acceleration to give a feedback that this is the acceleration in x-axis, y-axis and so on. Now with the feedback from accelerometer you know uh, you find out the accurate DR you know allowing for uh, you know the moment that is taken place from the original position and you get position. Of course, you use sonar to find out if there is any obstruction in the way. In the past, we have heard about the accident which has taken place by uh, a submarine colliding with obstruction. So sonar are used to find out if there is any obstruction ahead. Submarines should not make noise. So their propulsion system is not same as surface ships. Otherwise, the enemy uh, ships will come to know that there is submarine underwater. The purpose is defeated. So what happens is they are run by electrical motors. The propulsion is run by electrical motors and therefore the submarine can uh, virtually move without making any sound. So what are these diesel powered submarines and nuclear powered submarines? So these diesel powered submarines they have to come frequently to the surface to run the engines to charge the batteries. But these nuclear powered submarines, they don't have to come to the surface, you know, they can remain underwater for a very long period because the charging uh, goes on underwater, you know, they have this power stations which will keep charging. So why do we need so much of electrical power? Electrical power is required for, uh, of course, running the submarine, but doing a lot of other things like creation of oxygen, like running of freshwater generator etc. We need fresh water generator there because we cannot use salt water uh, for creating oxygen. If we use salt water for electrolysis, you know, apart from the oxygen, the chlorine and hydrogen is created. Whereas if we use fresh water, we will be creating oxygen and hydrogen. Hydrogen is released, but oxygen is uh, of tremendous importance on a submarine. People who live there, they continuously need oxygen. Let us look at some of the constructional features of the submarine.
In addition to the main ballast tank, there are other tanks required to fine-tune the displacement and the trim characteristics of a submarine. Once it is submerged, these are called variable ballast tanks. Then you have negative tanks. The negative tank is a variable ballast tank providing negative buoyancy and initial down angle. Submarines in their submerged posture reach a neutral buoyancy level and zero trim when the negative tank is nearly empty. Then uh, you have this inner hull in a submarine which is also called pressure hull. It holds all the pressure sensitive systems of the submarine including the crew. The inner hull must withstand the hydrostatic pressure to the submarine's maximum or test depth. A naval arc when he is creating submarine has to provide proper spacing of main ballast tank because main ballast tank has got relationship with the reserve buoyancy and relevant underwater volume. The main ballast tanks are the largest tanks on board responsible to alter the displacement of the submarine from being positively buoyant, that is when a uh, submarine is surfaced, when empty, to somewhere near uh, neutrally buoyant while the submarine is submerged, that means the tanks are full. The main ballast tanks are soft tanks because they do not need to withstand the hydrostatic pressure when the submarine is submerged. This is because they will be full at the submerged depth with the pressure equalizing on both the sides. We will look into the parts and components of a main ballast tank to understand the uh, sequence followed in diving and surface. The following figure will illustrate a transverse section of main ballast tank. So uh, if we look at this main ballast tank, there are flood ports. Flood ports are the openings at the bottommost position of the outer hull that allows water to enter and leave the tank. Then you have air vent risers, one on port and a starboard side each. They are rooted from the tank to the main air vent at the top of the pressure hull. For a surfaced submarine to dive, the air vent at the top is open. This allows the air in the tank to escape. The seawater floods in from the flood port below. The ballast weight now that is added helps submarine to dive. The operating depth of most modern submarine is 300 to 450 meters. For a submarine to surface from that depth, it first uses the hydroplanes to reduce the depth up to 3 to 4 meters below the water line. At that depth, the high pressure air at approximately 15 bar is introduced into the tank through the air valve. This air pushes the water out of the tank through the flood ports. Once this weight is lost, the submarine is now positively buoyant and rises up to the surface condition. Then you have trim tanks which are soft. As the name suggests, these are used to control the trim of the submarines. Submarines are very weight sensitive to longitudinal weight shifts that is uh, additions and removals. Moving water between the after and forward trim tanks can compensate for these changes. They are soft tanks because they are not required to withstand the external pressure. Changes due to temperature, density and depth are taken care of by compensating tanks. Compensating tanks are located at or close vicinity to the longitudinal center of gravity of the submarine. Because any changes in weight caused at the significant distance from the longitudinal center of gravity would create a trimming moment which is unwarranted as the submarine only needs to adjust its weight and doesn't want to change the trim. It is located within the pressure resistant hull and takes water or pumps out water to the sea depending on the situation to be tackled. Now let us see what happens when the submarine goes to the deeper depths. As the depth increases, the density of seawater would increase. And as the density increases, the buoyancy force will increase. Can we say that the buoyancy force is directly proportional to the density? So as the buoyancy increases, what will happen is this force will tend to push the submarine up. But we want to remain at the same depth. So some water can be taken in compensating tanks. Let us look at the other perspective. When the submarine goes down, what happens is at deeper depth because of the pressure the volume of submarine will decrease and when the volume of submarine will decrease if we look at uh, this part or this perspective of uh, the buoyancy the buoyancy also should decrease because the volume of the submarine is tending to reduce so to compensate for this you know when the buoyancy force is decreasing that means the submarine wants to go more down what we should do is release some water from the compensating tank. Now luckily what happens is the effect of density, you know, in increasing the buoyancy is slightly more than effect of the pressure that reduces the volume of submarine. 
Now, when the submarine is down, we are using food, fuel and various consumables and uh, because of that, what will happen is the weight of submarine is going to reduce. Now, this is compensated by taking in some water. One interesting thing uh, uh, which uh, uh, must be noted is, like you might have a fuel tank, when we use the fuel, there will be free surface in the tank. We don't want the free surface. So what can happen is, you have intake of the fuel from the upper side and from the lower side, the tank can be filled simultaneously with the salt water so that there is no free surface. Yes, but eventually when the fuel is replaced considerably by the uh, salt water, the weight of the submarine is going to increase because there is difference in density of the fuel oil and the salt water. Now this is once again uh, uh, this is once again resolved by the compensating tanks. So there are these various uh, uh, applications of compensating tanks.